Happy 4th of July. Happy 4th of July to you too. You know I'm live, right? No, I didn't know. Oh, well, you want to say hello to everybody? Sure. Okay, hang on. Let me put you on the Bluetooth real, real quick here. Hold on, good people. Da, 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 da. Let's see if I got you on the Bluetooth. Can you hear me? Philip. For a check. Okay, there we go. Okay, everybody, I have a I have a special guest here, and I didn't know he was calling. We yeah, have. I didn't know, know you're calling. Happy Fourth of July. Okay, the world's yeah. crazy out here. Everybody's shooting each other and everything else. I'm not sure I know what to celebrate and stuff, but Happy Fourth of July, Independence Day. I have on here with me my buddy Philip E. Barb, one of the nicest people that you'll ever meet, but a person that you definitely don't want to get on your bad side. <laughs> I got I got friends in low places. <laughs> yeah, you, I guarantee you, you do. How you doing tonight? I'm good, man. I'm good. You know, just uh, doing the thing. You know, recovering, mm -hmm. doing the therapy, doing everything I'm supposed to be doing. How's the hip surgery go? Good, good. I'm uh, 12, 11 days in today, and uh, moving around pretty good. And like mm -hmm. I said, doing the therapy, just pushing a little too hard. Just kind of, you know. The pain's just shifted, but I'm winning little victories, you know, winning little victories. Okay. Cool means. So, yeah. I, I, are, are, you, are you as excited as I am for trading camp to start? Man, I, I'm, I'm beyond excited. I, I don't even want to say nothing. I'm just so glad that this year there's not like all these ridiculous expectations and everybody's thinking that they, you know, gotten weaker and everybody's talking. That's great, man. First off, nobody knows what anybody is until they get out. <laughs> you are 100% right on that one. And you don't know who's going to get hurt, who's not. You know, we were me and Dak were talking last week and made a comment about, you know, you got these guys that come into training camp and they're out there with no pads and they're just incredible. They mm -hmm. don't miss a thing, don't miss a beat. Everything's perfect. They work their butt off, you know, and, and then – you got these other guys just not there at the right time. They don't, you know, they're making mistakes. They're just not, you know, focused like they should be. And then they come out the next with, for training camp and they put on pads. Mm -hmm. And all those guys who were online and perfect and dead end. They're not the get, same. <laughs> get punched in the mouth a couple of times and everything changes. And he said, and then just the opposite. These guys that were, you know, not on track. All of a sudden there's this fire that you see. And, and it's just uh Two different work ethics, two different things. You, mm -hmm. People just don't, you just don't know how people are or why. And uh, I, I, I think they're really excited. I, I know Dax in, in the house. immaculate shape. Just He looked cut up. The picture from him down in Florida, it was like, damn, he doesn't have an ounce of baby fat left on him. No, he's he's as heavy as he's ever been and as thinner, thinner than he's ever been. Mm -hmm. His body fat is just unbelievable and he, he just there's something about something about his demeanor this year that's just different you know i mean anybody who's ever suffered a major injury knows that it you want to be back you want to be 100 percent, and you go out you're giving 100 percent. but there's just there's no way you can't when something happens that you don't go oh my gosh what was that you know mm -hmm. oh what was that and, and not that you're hesitant. You're not hesitant. Because once you're in there, you're 100. You're, you're going 100. But things just don't seem to be 100. And uh, it, take, it takes some time for that to happen. And I, I, think, he's, I think he's in a new place, man. I, I, I really do. You know, the thing is, is, you know, as much as they, they always say, oh, they're back on the field, they're healthy. Nobody's ever really healthy. But when you have a injury like he had it to me it shifts everything because you still kind of favor it it's still not the same strength wise to where it was before and i bet that that led to the calf injury and also of course throwing more with his shoulder as opposed to whipping with his body you know as i watched him sometimes when he was scrambling out he would kind of be off of the ground 
throwing the football. So to me, it was like he wasn't able to really use his body fully. And for him to have 37 TDs, 4,400 and some odd yards passing, and his body wasn't right, having an off season where uh, this is the first time he's actually been able to work with C.D. Lamb in the off season period. Oh, and this is the first real off season he's had in three years. Right, yeah. At COVID two years ago. Right, and that was, you know, CD's rookie year, so they didn't work out then. And then, of course, last year he's recovering and on a pitch count in training camp and didn't play preseason games and then played, yeah. you know, the five games and got injured. So, yeah, I mean, you know, uh, excuse me, uh, he just didn't have any time to really work with him. That's where I'm excited to say the two of them getting together. You know, I, and I think about, you know, the connection they had with, with Cedric Wilson was pretty good. But as you kind of pointed out, there were times where Cedric would go one way when Dak was thinking he was going to be going the other. And those are things that kind of come together when you're working on a regular basis. I just don't think he had much time to work with anybody due to the injury and COVID. Yeah. Well, and, you know, just like uh, let's just let's move away from that. Let's just talk about an engine. Mm -hmm. When your your engine starts skipping and one of your spark plugs is going wrong. Mm Mm-hmm. What happens? You ain't got as much power. That thing kind of chucks and the, off. <laughs> and, and the next one goes out. Yeah, you're getting less and less power. <laughs> it just starts happening. The next one goes out because uh-huh. everything's got to be cohesive. Everything's got to be a unit. Your body is a machine. And if, if everything is not firing 100% in all aspects, um, other things are going to make up. A perfect example is I had a hip replacement last July. Mm-hmm. And my recovery time was really fast. I was back at school in three weeks uh, teaching. And I'm going into my second week right now, and I'm about a week behind the other one. Mm-hmm. Now, that's because last year I didn't have I didn't have a hip replacement that I had to favor. <laughs> you know, I still had a good – I still had a hip that hadn't been replaced. Even though it was, you know, in bad shape, it was still my hip. And, and it didn't, it, it felt like my hip. Well, now that I've had this one, I'm, I'm worried about favoring too much on the, the one that's been replaced. Uh-huh. And now this one's been replaced. So I'm like taking a little bit more precaution. I'm a little bit more conscious of it. Mm-hmm. Um, th- there was a, a, a little bit more cleanup on this one than the last one. Uh, so the recovery time's a little bit slower. So you just... You know, there's just one thing happens and the other happens. It's that way with everything in life, man. Life is uh, life is about being cohere, uh, being cohesive, mm-hmm. and everything flowing right. Um, you you got to make things flow, and when one thing goes wrong, it affects everything else. Just like injuries on a field. Um, sometimes you can plug in a different player in that position, and he does just as well. Or sometimes he can do better. But is he really doing better or is it just different and people can't adjust to it and it makes it seem better? And then other times it's just horrible because he's just not the same guy the other one was. You know what I mean? I know exactly what you mean. Things just have to work together and your body is is uh, is the same. It's, it's an instrument and it's, it's a machine. And uh, I think Dax machine is as tuned and prepared as it's ever been i think mentally psychologically uh socially i think in every way educationally uh i think he's putting in work with guys that uh he's been confident in before and they're just getting stronger really like the new receivers really like the new tight end really like the the new life uh offensive linemen uh, the two guys, uh, Ridgeway and the other guy, uh, mm-hmm. Smith. Yeah. What's it? Tyler, Tyler Smith. Smith? Yeah. Yeah, Tyler, yeah. Yeah. The guard. You know, I, I'm just sitting here thinking about if we just cut down on the penalties between the nine that we had from Baddish, the 13 we had from Connor Williams, the nine that we had from Lyle Collins in just 10 games that that alone will put us in a better position because, you know, people don't understand that there's a big difference of you being having a big play down the field and first down and some momentum and then getting or getting kicked back. You know, now it's first and 20. It it basically takes the running attack out of the equation. Yeah. 
You know, I mean, well, people don't put that into consideration. They're like, oh, well, Dak can't win this. Dak. It's like some of those games, like the 49er game. We didn't get 50 yards between Tony Pollard and Zeke Elliott. And you had well, 14 penalties. And so people look at that, that and say, I, you, you got to, Dak's got to overcome that. I'm sorry, there's not too many quarterbacks that are going to be able to overcome that. Well, and it's not just how many and how many yards to win. It's when it happens, true. Holy crap. They would happen when we would be third and seven and we would complete a pass 11 yards down the field for a first down and get a holding penalty. Mm -hmm. Now you're third and 16, you know, or, or third and 19 or whatever. Hey, and uh, yeah, I agree. It's just, I, I, I'm sorry, man. I, I stumbled onto the, to the 49er game, uh, <laughs> we play up not too long ago. Yeah. And I watched the whole thing. And I saw us called offsides on defense over and over. Yeah. And I saw them line up offsides so many times. And not called. Not called. I don't care. People can say what they want to say. I've been an official my whole life. I've had little league officials come to me and go, hey, man, we're going to call for this guy tonight because he's got a tournament. And, boy, he pays his umpires good. If you want to call that tournament, we got we got to be good for him tonight. I'm like, no. So we're talking about a little league tournament mm. that the guy wants to cheat for two dollars a game extra, and because the guy posts the thing with with the uh, Texas Roadhouse instead of Popeye's fried chicken, and and you know the complimentary room it feeds you so good that they want to cheat for that. You don't think these guys will sway a game? <laughs> Man, get the hell out of well, here! Well, you know, after hearing that Miami Whatever. coach was you know going to pay his coach to throw games. Uh, I don't put the it owner. past the owner. Yeah. Excuse me, the owner was going to pay the coach to throw games. I don't put this past anybody. Um, Loyal, one of my fans, Loyal Cowboys, and I know you know about my man Stu because thank you for getting uh, us the tickets for um, the Star. Uh, turns yeah, out that was the first you know tour and stuff that they actually started doing yeah, um, the since weekend, the pandemic. Yeah, that weekend um, for the pandemic. Um, he wanted me to relay to you about. My uh, buddy Stewart's wishes. I, I kind of gave them to Micah. Micah was kind of in another zone when he was there for the autograph signing. But Stewart yeah. had two wishes. And one of those wishes, of course, was us to take care of his mom and fix the house. And we did that one. And the second one was for the Cowboys to win the Super Bowl. Well, I'll tell you what, I'd have a third hip replacement if that would guarantee it. <laughs> 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 okay. Oh, well, I was hoping you could pass that one on to Dak that, you know, um, one of the biggest there, Cowboy fans in the world, his there, dying wish would be for the Cowboys to win the Super Bowl. There's nothing. There is nothing in this world. See, this, this is when, when, you know, I think, you know, I, I try, man, I, I try to stay away from them idiots on social media. And, and, and when they just get to the point of just ignorance, I just – it just sometimes it just pushes me too far. I try mm -hmm. to stay away. It's addictive, man. But nobody wants it worse than those guys. Nobody sacrifice. These idiots sit at their house and watch a game mm -hmm. and and watch them get beat out of the playoffs when they watch an an, an official twenty five yards behind the play. When most of the time they're only fifteen. Yeah. This guy's twenty five yards behind the play lightly jogging up to come stop the clock when he knows that clock closing that screwed us. Mm -hmm. and decides to go in the same uh -oh. hole that Dak backing out of comes, comes into the same hole and runs into Dak. Yeah. You, okay, so Dak's walking backwards out of the hole, and this guy's running forward, and they blame Dak for running into the guy. And then he, if, if anybody goes back and watches it, he doesn't just touch the ball and put it down. He puts it down way too deep for the for the uh, for the center to even get to the ball, and then he picks it up and resets it again. If anybody really watches, that <laughs> that's enough time right there. If he would have just put the ball down the first time and left yeah, it alone, boom. that's enough time. It would have been if enough time. If he doesn't run in, if he doesn't run into Dak, which I I, I, I tell you, man. I've watched him too many times, and when you watch a guy running a play and he's the back judge back there, mm -hmm. and he's freaking 25, 30 yards behind the, the play, 
and they're running a, a down to the second. And you go watch these other games when they're running clock down, even in the third, second quarters, and you see those officials edging up and edging up to be sure that they're going to help them with that clock. And this guy's 25 jogging, taking his, taking his sweet time to get up there mm-hmm. and then sets the ball way too deep under the center and then picks it up again and pulls it forward while they're trying to adjust. So they have to adjust again and then then looks up like, okay, should I get out of the way? Oh, okay, I should get out the way. And then gets out of the way. Man, I'm sorry, bro. Don't be sorry. Let, let, let it out. Let it out, man. Let it go. I've watched it. Okay, I've been an Brother official. Does, that's all. I've been an official and a coach for over 30 years. And there's one, two, three, four, five situations in that last play that that official affects time. Mm-hmm. Five. Number one, he's way too far back behind that play when other, other officials are already edging up. That's a fact. Go watch it. I agree with you on that one. Yeah, it's against the, the rules. The second time. Why do you run into the same hole when Dak's walking backwards getting out of that hole when you have the choice? You're walking, you're going forward. You can see where he is. Go to the other freaking hole. No, you intentionally go where the clog, where the, where the clog is so it takes you longer. He gets through the clog. They go to hand him the ball, and he puts the ball down, and he shoves it back under the center's butt or between his legs, and then – stops and picks it up and moves it back forward again and then stands up and looks around like, okay, is it good? And mm-hmm. then gets out of the way. That's five things in that one play where if you add, let's say, a third of a second, that's a second and a half. Yeah. In a second and a half, do we get the center of that ball and kill it? We kill it. We got another play. Okay. Okay. Next time I hear some dumbass say it was Dak's fault, I'm letting you know publicly on your on your podcast, Ooh. you're an idiot. And that's why they ran out. That's why they see, ran out the stadium too. Like like if cowards. you don't see that time, if you don't, if you can't go back and watch that play and and see that that guy ruined more time than anybody else in that play, and that's the same official who was calling the offsides against Arizona, the same crew mm-hmm. that called the Arizona game. That destroyed us in penalties. Yeah, we we I, I mean, I, I can't even believe can't even believe they're not under investigation. I couldn't believe it. Just my opinion. This is Dak. Dak never said a word. I'm, I'm telling you right now, Dak never said a word. He doesn't. He won't. Dak's like, man, I you know they want. I don't care. I got to overcome all that. I don't care. I got to you know he won't. He'll never say we got cheated. I got cheated. It was their fault. Never, never. Mm-hmm. Not one time. He'll say, I got to be better. I got to make better decisions. I can't put it in a position where they have the opportunity to get me. There you go. You're right about that. You can't leave any doubt with, with, the, with the officials. We're never going to get a call our way. Because it's, nope. it's crazy when I watch other games and see the things that Aaron Rodgers' offensive line gets away with and stuff. And, oh, you know, some of, we, we've got phantom ones, penalties that go against stuff. So I remember the Micah Parsons unnecessary roughness on uh, Derek Carr. And, you know, I remember the Tampa Bay ones, my man uh, throwing his helmet off on the field and everything else and stuff that's not getting called. But, you know, Cowboys, we never get a break on any of those. But well, hopefully what, what this season. Phantom, what about the phantom, uh, uh, was it? Bryce Butler going to the, the huddle twice. Oh whatever. my God! Yeah, in the playoffs. Yeah. Never, yeah, never, never stepped foot into it. Never. Never got. Never got. He was three yards away from the huddle. Yeah. Unsportsmanlike conduct. Fifteen yards instead of it being first down on about the twenty-seven yard line. <laughs> we're back across midfield and stuff. Yeah, we uh, definitely get hit with ones that we we just. Uh, it's just crazy. And it's win, man. It's win. You know, I. I it's when uh, I, that, that's the thing. Officials have way too much power when it comes to win making calls. Mm-hmm. When, when you got a guy like Tyron Smith, who's a first ballot Hall of Famer, and they call a hold on him on a play, and he turns and looks at you like, Are you freaking stupid? I'm going to take his word for it. Yeah. 
He knows that he's done that a million times. He knows that that is something that they've been taught to do because that's not supposed to be considered a hold. You, you know, and that's that's the thing. Can you not call a hold every single play? You could. I mean, technically, you could. Yeah, you could. You could. But they don't unless well, it's the Cowboys. <laughs> but they're not going to until they need it. Yeah. But that's just, you know, whatever. I, I'm not, I hate to be that guy because I'm not that guy. But I'm also an official who I know. I know what officials do. Mm-hmm. I know uh, the, the official – who got had the, the, the problem with uh, Allen Iverson that time, who said that the entire officiating crew for the next three games were calling palming penalties, calling palming calls on Allen Iverson to the point that after near the end of the first game, Allen walked up to him and said, hey, man, how long y'all going to keep doing this to me? And he's like, what are you talking about? And he said they both smirked, and he's like, I know I shouldn't have said nothing. He knew they were doing it to him. Mm -hmm. They know. They know. It's just what it is, man. It's just what it is. Uh, We're going to be ready, and and I think that's the key. The key is to not put it anywhere near their hands. And uh, I'm not blaming the referees for winning or losing. I'm just telling you that it's part of what you have to overcome and uh that's just what that's just how it is all right but, amen well we got a little over three weeks until training camp starts yeah i'm gonna go see him next week i'm gonna go try to get some therapy on this hip up there and that's uh the advantages of having a a, a loving nephew you know <laughs> yeah that's world-class so, treatment there buddy shoot yeah, come, come up and get two or three days of treatment with one of his, with one of his PTs and, you know, said he would take care of all that, man. That's a blessing. That's great. Well, I hope yeah. the hip heals up real quick and that you'll be back out there coaching and ready to rock and roll. Philip. Well, hey man, I hip, appreciate the hip you. Don't fit my mouth. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, they def- you don't need any work on the mouth. The mouth works fine. <laughs> all right. Well, you- Hope again, it ain't gonna affect my mouth. I promise you, I'm not gonna. I'm not gonna. Oh stop man! Eating. And well, I'm so glad y'all had fun at the star. And oh man, so that was incredible. I, I really was. It was. It was a, a last minute thing because they really just didn't know how things were going to be working. Mm-hmm. You know, because like you said, it was the first groups. Yeah. That started in there. So uh, yeah, it was a blessing. I thank thank Peter, tax tax manager, for. Uh, Helping us with that bridge and that uh, communication gap. Yeah, uh, the people I knew had, hadn't even got back there yet, so Peter kind of took over. And uh, it's good to have, you know, people with good hearts that that know that know when people are doing good for other people. Amen um, on that one. I appreciate that because you know that was after the week that we spent, we were uh, you know going crazy and busting our behinds. That was a great way to finish off the week for everybody to get a chance to see the star and everything else, get some pictures inside and then get ready to kind of all go the, our separate ways and stuff. And I can't thank you enough for uh, getting us in there. Well, man, I can't thank you enough for being the man that you are, dude. You know, not, I, I made a phone call and I, and I, I got some friends to help friends. Mm-hmm. You picked up and loaded your friends and your equipment and your, your tools and you drove all the way down to Dallas, Texas. What is that? 15, 16 about, hours? Uh, 20, 22 hours. About okay, 1,300 miles. 22 by. hours, man. Y'all drove 22 hours to go help remodel an elderly lady's house because it was her, her, her dying husband, her dying <laughs> son's wish to have her, you know, to have his mother taken care of. And you guys went down there and did that. If that's not inspiring, if that's not like, special mm-hmm. you know and it takes a, a hell of a man to be that kind of guy well, i appreciate and, that and you're a blessing dude you're a blessing to your family i'm sure and you're you're a, you're a blessing to a lot of people and and your your integrity and your your heart come through and i thank you for that oh man you gonna make me bless here philip oh, i appreciate it man I, you know i, I just try and try and look out for others and try and be a positivity. And that's something I think we need in this world right now. 
there's so much hate and so much division and stuff. I just don't understand what happened to America that I used to know. Yeah. Well, I heard, I heard, uh, I heard Skip Bayless and, uh, and, uh, Colin Cowherd did something like that. Uh, Oh, I'm sorry. That was 35 years ago. My bad. (laughs) (laughs) All right, buddy, you take it easy, man. I appreciate you. All right, man. Hey, man, it's always a pleasure. Okay. I called called to tell you, you know, happy, happy 4th of July. And, uh, see, I appreciate, you know, I appreciate the friendship we've, we've, uh, developed and, uh, stay in touch, man. All right, man. Thank you so much for everything, man. I'll talk to you soon. All right. Okay. Bye. Wow.